know if we have anybody joining us tonight. No, we just have a, a list that uh, asks for notification every meeting. Um, so it's just a list that Melissa sends out to a standing list. <clears throat> so I'm really okay. not sure. Okay, great. And we're okay, live. I'll, I'll just press record. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. And if I can get a mover and a seconder to open up our council meeting, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that we do call this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 at 6 p.m. And council is in favor. And that is carried. Okay, and we do uh, for our next Item number three, approval of the agenda. We do have two additions to the agenda and council has noticed those. Item 16.5 and 11.10. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Grego and John. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that council does hereby approve the agenda as amended. Those in favor? And that is carried. So item number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof, declaration of conflict of interest. Council, you can do that now or at any time that such situation arises through the council meeting. Item number five is the adoption of the minutes for our regular council meeting. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, as distributed. Those in favor? And that is carried. And if I can get a mover and a seconder for our special meeting of council. John and Belinda, or Drago and Belinda. And moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of council held on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021, as distributed. And council, those in favor? And that is carried. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Item number six, business arising from the minutes. Seven, deputation presentations, tender awards, and open discussions. There's none. Eight, petitions, none. Nine, disbursements, none. So 10, we're moving on to manager's reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder to put the motion on the table. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. 
and we open the floor up for the reports. And the first one is the CAO report. Gail, did you want to uh, discuss anything before I open up the floor to comments or questions? Just to add that um, the excavation on Murphy Lane went very well on, uh, was it yesterday? We lost track of time. Um, Anyway, no boil water advisory required, and they think they were done pretty much close to two o'clock, which was was really efficient. So, um, other than that, I don't have anything to add. So, if there's any questions, I'll take them. Okay, great. Council, any questions for Gail? Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, through the mayor to, to uh, the CAO. I agree with her report where she made a statement that we should fully train our public works staff before they use the excavator, obviously with health and safety reasons. I think that's a very, very smart and precautionary move, and I think it's a good decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik, and I will second that. I had comments on that as well. And just as you brought it up, I'll just uh, read mine as well. I'm glad that both Gail and Duane recognize that we need to take a planned and safe approach to implementing new methods of taking care of business, safety of our employees, and ensuring that we have all the proper equipment and training in place to complete the water repairs internally cannot be emphasized enough. So I thank you for that. I do want to make just a couple of comments. Is there any other further questions or comments for Gail? Just for the sake of our community, I'd like to um, highlight in Gail's report where she talks about the Community Living Algoma's initiative in reaching out and setting up the webinar teaching series with Al Condalusi. Uh, it's been an amazing journey with him. Uh, definitely the way for communities to strive towards inclusiveness and diversity. And I've watched uh, each segment except the last one because I've had to watch the recordings, but uh, was very well done. Where Gail talks about the Minister of, uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs meeting that they set up for us with their staff. I was thoroughly impressed with Minister Clark's staff and the reassurance that we are on the right track by creating the MSC and that we are aligning ourselves for success. I did send a personal thank you note to the minister for setting up the meeting and applauded his staff for not only their enthusiasm to help us, but for the wealth of knowledge that they bring to the table for our community. I can't say enough. I just felt like that meeting was uh, beneficial for our staff. And the last uh, point I want to make of Gail's report is I would like to officially welcome Mr. Silbert Barrett to the Horn Pain team and look forward to meeting him and working with him as we set a new course for Horn Pain through the Horn Pain Housing Corporation. So, welcome. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll move on to, we do have one uh, resolution coming out of uh, Gail's report. Do we want to do those resolutions, Gail, after we pass the manager's reports, all of them, or do, should we do them now? I would just wait till after the manager re manager's reports are done. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so moving on to our public works manager's report. Duane, did you want to speak to your report before I open it up to the floor? I have nothing else to add right now. I'm ready for questions. Okay, great. Any questions for the public works manager? I don't see any questions and I don't have any questions. <laughs> We're okay to move on. Okay, thank you, Duane. Economic Development Officer's Report. Any questions? Or Stacy, would you like to speak to your report first? Sorry. I just have one comment. So we, uh, Gail and I had a meeting with Sarah, our consultant with the OP today. Uh, it was very, very good. The, the reports are well, are done very well. 
and she actually went through <clears throat> went through section by section with us to make sure it was in line with our plan. So that was just a really good meeting today. But on um, anything else in the report, I'll answer questions. Glad to hear that. Any other uh, comments or questions for Stacy? I don't have any either. Thank you, Stacy. Okay, I'll uh, put the motion to a vote to accept the manager's reports as read. Those in favor? And that is carried. And we have the resolution for the special meeting scheduled. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. And that's John and Peter. Okay, moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does amend resolution number 2021 55 to reflect changes to the topics of discussion for the special meeting scheduled for March as follows Wednesday, March 24th, 2021, time 6 p.m. Presentation Ontario Clean Water Agency dechlorination project and general update. Council deliberation and open dis public discussion on 2021 municipal budget and 2021 water and sewer rates broadband Wednesday our date Wednesday March 31st 2021 time 6 p.m intend intent to adopt 2021 municipal budget and the 2021 water and sewer rates annual departmental work plans broadband acquisition or disposition of land any comments on the motion Okay, those in favor, Council? And that is carried. Okay, so we're moving on now to correspondence action items. And our first action item is 11.1, .1, NOMA's call for nominations. And that's open to discussion for council. Gail, did you want to speak to this before we discuss? Uh, not really. I just, uh, if you do want to nominate somebody, um, we can bring, there's still time to bring a resolution back to the April meeting. So um, I don't have anything prepared tonight for that. Okay. My um, concern when I was reading it, I didn't look into it. Um, I was just concerned of the financial commitment that we as a municipality would have to cover. Sometimes when we are representing on other boards, the um, your home municipality has to cover those expenses. So, and I'm not sure with NOMA actually. So, is there any nominations that council would like to put forward? No, okay, then we'll move on to 11.2. And if I can get a mover and a seconder to read the motion. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Whereas council through their membership in the Thunder Bay District Municipal League received correspondence from Judith Monteith, Fer Monteith Farrell, MPP Thunder Bay Atacokan, requesting support of her private member's bill, the Aquinin Neen Act, Who Am I, Rep Respecting Identity Documents, 2021, an act to amend the Photo Card Act, 2008 and the Vital Statistics Act to prohibit the charging of fees for a photo card or relating to birth registrations, birth certificates, and other documents. And whereas this bill will address the cost barrier issues faced by many Ontarians today by making the following charges, no fees for obtaining all types of birth certificates, no fees for changes and all other services related to birth certificates, no fees for obtaining an 
Ontario Photo ID card. And whereas costs are not the only barriers re related to obtaining ID, an advisory committee would be established to review other barriers to ID access faced by Ontarians with recommendations for improvement to be forwarded to the minister. Therefore, be it resolved that the council, the corporation, the township of Hornpain does by does hereby support Judith Monteith Farrell's private member's bill, the Awiwin Neen Act, who am I, respecting identity documents 2021. Be it further resolved that this resolution is forwarded to Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Lisa Thompson, Minister of Government and Consumer Services, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Capscasing, and we received correspondence from a resident. Gail, do, a, uh, do yourself or a staff member would like to speak to this first? Well, I think uh, I'll let Dwayne speak to a portion of it and then I can fill in if there's any uh, anything I need to say. Okay, sounds great. Okay, there's some of the stuff that we can address directly in fairly quickly uh, for as far as the vehicles running through the center of the the uh, Cedar Point area we can definitely put signs up to try to limit the amount of vehicles going through there uh, it can also on item two it can commit to cutting the grass every two weeks you can there, keep the grass down apparently uh, they some people have found some ticks out there and the garbage around the park is uh, definitely a problem and trying to get uh, prices on uh, bear proof garbage cans, I'm trying to get a reasonable rate, they're very expensive. And uh, lots of it's gonna be reviewed and when we do the future development of the Cedar Point, we'll, we'll address lots of the other problems. Okay, thank you for that. Council, I open up for floor to the discussion. Go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you, uh, to the rest of Council Minister. I think it's a well-written letter. It's a respectful letter uh, to Municipal Council Administration. And I think there's some good valid points. Uh, with the vehicles, that has been an ongoing issue for the last 30 years plus. Uh, maybe we'll do some, I think, uh, suggest some overall marketing through our website and, and hard uh, copy posters throughout the community to inform or even to when you send out billings, uh, maybe attach the information that people stay away from the, and it is dangerous because over the years, the children running around playing. And I think that, that safe, health and safety is crucial. And thanks Wayne for the uh, reaction and hopefully could work together with this individual. I think be positive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Any other comments from council? Go ahead, Councillor Kistmaker, Belinda. It was just, uh, I really like to see, uh, I really like seeing that type of letter. It's just that it had information on what, ideas on what to do. And it's nice seeing that everyone is noticing that we have some issues. I think we can really make that place a really nice and enjoyable spot like it used to be. And uh, I think with, some good planning we can satisfy everyone out there so i don't know i'm eager to get that one going thank you belinda I am in total agreement with all three comments. I'm glad that some action can be taken right away. Duane, thank you for that. And um, I'm in agreement with Duane too, that when we do our community improvement planning and in our SDR, it talked about us looking at our parks. So I think we're on the right uh, road. So I would encourage too that the resident uh, reach out at those times and I'm and this letter will be filed along with those uh, for that file when we get to planning. Okay. And I'll, uh, just to verify, Gail, a letter has been sent to the resident in informing of what yeah, can a letter be done. Yeah, a letter was sent just thanking her for the the like you said, Belinda, the great uh, ideas, not only just identifying the issues, but suggesting some solutions and just saying that we will be working on our recreation master plan and 
um, will certainly be considered then and there'll also be more opportunity for public input at that time. Right on, thank you, Gil. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to 11.4, Ontario Clean Water Agency Annual Report. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda, Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the 2020 Section 11 Annual Report for the Hornpain Drinking Water System as prepared by the Ontario Clean Water Agency, Aqua. Any discussion on the report? I had uh, one question on the report, and it's on page one, and it talks about... Um, if our annual report available is available, is your annual report available to the public at no charge on the website on our in, on the internet? And ours is, but the report says no. It is. It does. Yeah, I, didn't but that. I, I was. Yeah, I was confused because this oh. is section eleven annual report. This one's not there, but our annual report is there. Well, maybe is it? Did they mean our our website or Aqua's website? I don't know. Oh. Maybe that's. I don't know. Well, I mean, Anyways, thought it been, it. yeah, I thought it would be I ours. Think, it, but yeah, yeah. But that okay. was my only just to check that because we do have it because I checked uh, we, yeah. last year's is up there. So yeah, no, they're there usually. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, do, I'll just double check that. Yep. Right on. Thank you, Gil. Okay, I'll put that to the vote. If there's no further comments from council. <clears throat> okay. Those in favor. And that's carried. Peter, that was in favor, right? You didn't want to speak. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so moving on to 11.4, we've got the annual report for Aqua. If I get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago. And John. Okay, moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby accept the 2020 Annual Summary Report for the Hornpain Drinking Water System as prepared by Ontario Clean Water Agency, Aqua. Any uh, comments on the motion or the report? Okay, we'll put that to the vote, Council. Those in favour? And that is carried. And moving on to the last report from the Ministry of Environment. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby accept the 2020 Annual Inspection Report for Herbert Avenue Drinking Water System as prepared by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Any discussion on the motion or the report? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Moving on to 11.7. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John. And Belinda.
Moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Whereas council through their membership in the Thunder Bay District Municipal League, TBDML, has received correspondence from Rick Dumas, mayor of the town of Marathon, requesting support for the city of Thunder Bay to pause on any decisions or changes to the services of Superior North Emergency Medical Services, SNEMS, until a meaningful and full consultation process has been conducted with all relevant communities. And whereas communities in the District of Thunder Bay are deeply concerned with the recent report submitted by Performance Concept Consulting with regard to the proposed changes to the SNEMS services to the communities surrounding the City of Thunder Bay. And whereas the communities that will be affected by these proposed changes were not consulted with a prop uh, partner approach and are expressing their desire to revisit the proposed plan through a meaningful and thorough consultation process. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpane, although through its affiliation to the affected communities via the Thunder Bay Municipal League, does hereby support the Town of Marathon and all communities in the District of Thunder Bay and their collective request for a full consultation process for all communities served by Superior North Emergency Medical Services before any final decisions or changes are made to the vital services offered. Be it further resolved that this resolution will be forwarded to the City of Thunder Bay, the Town of Marathon, and all communities in the Thunder Bay District. Any discussion on the motion? I want to uh, thank Councillor Peroff for bringing this to our attention. I am intrigued to read the Superior North EMS Master Plan that was included with the background documents. It may help us in ensuring our services stay the same. So if there's no further comments, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Now we're moving on to 11.8. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Drago. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Drago Stefanik. Whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately impacted residents in long-term care homes and has exposed structural weaknesses in the long-term care system. And whereas in July, 2020, the provincial government launched an independent commission to investigate the spread of COVID-19 within long-term care homes, how residents, staff and families were impacted in the adequacy of measures taken by the province and other parties to prevent, isolate and contain the spread of the virus. And whereas on January 29th, 2021, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, provided a board-approved submission improving the long-term care output break response in Ontario, submission to the long-term care COVID-19 commission, outlining recommendations to the commission on behalf of the municipal governments that operate 100 of the 626 long-term care homes in Ontario. And whereas this submission puts forward 48 recommendations for action in both public and private long-term care homes across nine themes. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpane, does hereby support Halton Region Regional Council's resolution endorsing the Association of Municipalities of Ontario's recommendations to Long-Term Care COVID-19 Commission and strongly urges the pro provincial government to move forward with implementation of these recommendations, including instituting higher standards with increased funding for to for implement implementation. Be it further resolved that Council also supports Halton's request that the federal government enhance federal health care funding to the provinces and territories, specifically dedicating funding to long-term care, and undertake further efforts to protect, promote, and restore the physical and mental well-being of long-term care residents in Canada. And be it further resolved that since the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, works with and advocates to the federal government to secure new tools and empower municipalities to build stronger communities, that Council requests that FCM develop a policy and advocacy position on enhanced federal support for long-term care. 
be it finally resolved that this resolution be sent to the right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Christine Elliott, Ontario Minister of Health, and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, for their consideration, with copies to the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, Carol Hughes, MP Algoma Manitoulin Kapiskasing, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Manitoulin, and the Regional Municipality of Halton. Any discussion on the motion? I put that to a vote. Those in favor, Council? And that is carried. None opposed. And 11.9, we received information. I don't know if Gail, if you'd like to speak to this first before council discusses. Um, I did reach out, <clears throat> excuse me, to the ministry just to see, first of all, if these documents were public and if we could share them uh, so to let council know, um, you know, what's going on and, and give them an opportunity to discuss. So the response, um, actually I have it right here. She just said that uh, the letter was to provide mayor and council early notification of the steps taken to support the negotiations uh, about the Aboriginal title claim and invite an opportunity for further discussion to help us understand the Township of Hornpain's interests with respect to the lands in question, <clears throat> excuse me, and address any questions or comments. Uh, so they're in the early stages of negotiations and more information will be provided as they reach key milestones in the process, including consultation with the public and with municipalities. And she had just said, please feel free to put it on the agenda. Um, and they look forward to an opportunity to set up a meeting uh, to discuss with council. So we will uh, invite her to a meeting or, or a representative of her to a meeting. Um, I guess when we have more information, we can reach out to her and see where they're at with that. Okay, so we're possibly looking at our next uh, regular meeting of council that they um, should be. I, I think we might have something on that one already. Maybe okay. maybe May. May, okay. I'll, I'll have to see exactly what their timelines are. It sounds like it's still quite early, so there might be enough time to, you know, to put it off for a bit. Okay, sounds good. Any uh, comments from council? Just from my end, I did reach out to Norman. I haven't heard back yet. What did I do with my page? Just on the one fact sheet, there's the ministry representation and then the Pick Mobert representation. So I did reach out to him and hopefully I'll be able to connect and talk about the claim. Okay, if there's no further discussion right at this moment, this will come back to council. So we'll discuss further then and we look forward to hearing when they can come, Gail. Okay, and we did have the addition to our agenda in 11.10. And that's for our fire department. Could I uh, get a mover and a seconder, please? Peter? And John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Whereas the Ontario government announced a one-time $5 million grant to municipal fire services to assist addressing challenges associated with training and virtual inspections due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the ability to train fire service members in a COVID environment has brought new restrictions and despite opportunities to train online and through other formats, not all training priorities have been met over the last year. And whereas fire departments have raised concerns about fire code enforcement and the ability to enter premises to conduct inspections and promote fire safety, and whereas the Township of Hornpain is eligible to receive up to $4,800 as part of this grant program to support fire services through this period of uncertainty and ongoing challenges. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby approve Miles Wollingford 
Wallingford, Hornpain Fire Chief, to apply for and accept in principle the 2020-2021 Fire Safety Grant on behalf of the municipality for the Hornpain Fire Department. Be it further resolved that this application must be received by the Office of the Ontario Fire Marshal no later than March 19th, 2021. And as a condition of the grant, these funds must be spent by August 1st, 2021. And a report back to the Fire Marshal, Marshal will be required by September 1st, 2021, outlining how the grant was utilized at the fire department level. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution will be sent to the Ontario Fire Marshal. Any discussion on the motion? Councillor Paraf, go ahead. No, it's not a discussion. It's more of a comment that March 19th deadline is in two days. So that's a pretty short timeline for something like this. Yeah, it was very short. Hence the addition to our, our amendment, because I believe it was received on the 11th. Am I getting the correct date? March 11th. Uh -huh. So hence why we it wasn't hmm. put on Friday's agenda package. So kudos to Miles for catching it and getting on it, for sure. Any further discussion? I don't see any, so we'll put it to the vote. Those in favor, council? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, so now we're moving on to 12 correspondence information only. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information only package attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. Any comments on the information only package? I have one on um, 12.4 from parliamentary assistant Stan Cho. He talks about in the letter that um, the ministry of finance was to facilitate a meeting between Hornpain and the LCBO. And I was wondering if there's any movement on that. Did we hear anything about that? No, I haven't heard anything on that. We can have okay. to follow up on it. I want to inform council for item 12.7, Phenom with the insurance rate increase. I did do an interview yesterday with Nick Dunn from TV Ontario Northeast Journalism Hub. And he'll notify us when that interview comes out. He was interviewing all sorts of municipalities on the increases to insurance. On uh, 12.10, I have requested to see the final plan for the forest management plan. And um, Shelly was able to send me some supplementary documents that were looked at while they created that plan. So if there need be, I will meet with them. Gail, we were having a discussion about 12.12, .12, the AMO communications for the Municipal Councillor Code of Conduct consultations. Did you want to add anything to that? Well, I just thought Council might be interested to, to give their input, but for some reason I can't pull that document up on my, uh, my screen, so I don't have a copy of it in front of me right now. So I think it looks like the... Uh, consultation periods open but I don't have the date so I'll if they're not I don't think they're in the letter either or the document so I'll have to get that for you if you're interested in in uh, submitting something or okay. reading about it at least it, I, I think there's um, I know when we've been to conferences and workshops before uh, we hear a lot of uh, for lack of a better term horror stories of of things going on 
between councils and staff or just between council members themselves and lots of conflict and um, we've been uh, really lucky not to have to deal with that kind of stuff but it happens and it happens in in the bigger cities that you wouldn't that you think would kind of be more organized so it's uh, it's amazing so obviously there's enough issues that they they feel something has to be done so I just thought you might have a good perspective to give some input yeah that's I'm just thinking as you're saying that now it might be a good to give input on training dollars as well to support communities so that like you think about conflict resolution and how to do that like for a small municipal municipality like ours we know the cost of training and to bring those services in to get training for councils training is there's some available when it's a new council but throughout council it should be ongoing so I just want to take note of the North, uh, Far Northeast Training Board Labor, Local Labor Market Plan for 2021. That's uh, an imperative document for us to use in the future because that is, uh, would motivate us for growth and attracting people to the North. They're looking at, uh, I think it was 46%. We won't be able to cover the jobs over the next, um, I believe it's the next decade. You can see it in the report. And just the last uh, piece of uh, correspondence from 1214, Val, Township of Valrite with our NEOMA affiliation. I did reach out to Mayor Barrel and I have not uh, received correspondence back just to check how this is going and if there's any um, exactly what the partnership program looks like. This must have been on the agenda at NEOMA before we were a part of NEOMA. So I was just trying to follow up and get some background information. As we know, agriculture is growing. So if we can get our community involved, that would be good. Any other comments on the information only? Seeing none, I'll put the motion to a vote for accepting, acknowledging receipt of the correspondence information only package. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 13, there's none donations, 14 conference seminars and training, none, 15 uh, committee reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpane does hereby acknowledge receipt of the minutes from Hornpane Public Library regular, sorry, Hornpain Public Library Board regular meetings held on the following dates. Monday, June 1st, 2020. Thursday, July 16th, 2020. Monday, August 17th, 2020. Thursday, September 24th, 2020. Monday, October 26th, 2020. And Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Any discussion on the motion? I do want to congratulate our local public library for maintaining a board and meetings. There were several municipalities that uh, had difficulty maintaining meetings through last year. So I think that alone stands on its, on its own merit to say thank you for doing that, all the volunteers that sit on the Hornpain Public Library Board. So I put that motion to a vote council, those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, so now we're on to 16, news and other business, and 16.1, I'll hand it over to our coordinator, Gail. So, um, I think the <clears throat> biggest news is um, the vaccines are starting to roll out. Um, we've got uh, all the long-term care, and I think most of the frontline hospital staff here in town done, as well as the over 80s and the 55 plus uh, urban indigenous population are most most of the ones that were available of all those age groups or had agreed to get the vaccine. 
Um, and they're doing clinics this week uh, all throughout the district, uh, Hearst, Cap, Smooth Rock, uh, Cochrane, Timmins. So <clears throat> I'm sitting, Drago and I are sitting on the vaccine implementation table. Um, so we've been meeting, uh, It's it's been about once a week, but it's, they're not, they just call the meetings when they need them. So they're not sort of regular. Um, so um, according to the Prime Minister last week, he was saying we should be, as a country, getting a million vaccines uh, a week. So hopefully that stays true and we can, um, you know, all be, all the ones that want to be or can be vaccinated will, will be done, you know, maybe within whatever, 20, 25 weeks, depending on how many children there are and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, Porcupine Health Unit, I got to say, uh, hospital staff too, but the Porcupine Health Unit, they are working 24-7. And Dr. Catton is just so good, uh, so on the ball. And uh, I, I, I commend them. I feel bad for them because I think it's obviously a very stressful and busy time for them. But uh, they're doing a fantastic job. So uh, we have made our arena available uh, to the health unit if should they need it. Uh, they're actually not sure if they're going to need a building that size uh, in Hornpain, but anyways, we'll make that available to them if they do need it. Uh, they've been using the Legion so far. And with regard to our regular meetings, uh, the weekly CCG meetings are, are going well as well. They're well attended and um, no um, striking <laughs> news to report, which is good. That means we're doing well. Um, the messaging they're looking for now is basically be kind, of course, be patient. The vaccines are coming. And just because the vaccines are out there doesn't mean we can let down our guard. We have to stay vigilant until, um, you know, the majority of the population is vaccinated. Um that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Mayor, did you have anything else to add to that? No, that was a great summary, uh, Gail. The only addition I would have is that if you are unsure about the vaccine or you have any underlying issues, health issues that you're concerned about, this is the time to make the appointment with your health professionals to understand what the vaccine is and and to get that information because when the vaccines come it comes very quickly and and do those do those precautionary steps now yes good yeah. point there's not much they don't get much notice of when they are getting the vaccine so we have to be ready for sure good point yeah is there any questions about the community control group or vaccination rollout from council for Gail. Okay, we'll continue on then. 16.2, reduction of speed limit on municipal road. And I believe I gotta bring up the report. Dwayne, did you wanna to speak to this first? I think it's pretty well laid out. If you have any questions, I'll take them. Okay, sounds good. I'll open up the floor to council for questions or comment on the report. I know just to let council know that I have had um, complaints about this to, to me and have asked people to submit requests for service forms in. Go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker, Peter. I would, uh, I would support, support the complaint. You support, okay. Yeah, You'll have to speak up, Peter. Sorry, I would support it 100%. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Councillor Kistemaker Belinda? This has to happen. It's on my street. It has to happen. It's very <laughs> dangerous out there. Just listening to it, it's very dangerous. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. So just to move forward with this, then the recommendation is to uh, adopt a bylaw governing traffic on the connecting link that recognizes a new speed limit. So this bylaw will be coming to council when? Should 
should be ready before next council meeting for sure. For next council meeting. Okay. Sounds good. So council knows. I was wondering too, if we, um, do we have any signage out in that area of, uh, you know, children at play those slow down community friendly signs? You have children at play signs. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Peroff, John. Yeah, I just uh, I'm not a, I'm definitely in support of uh, of what we're doing here, but I'm just want to clarify or seeking answers. Is it because the traffic is going over fifty, and we want to reduce it down to forty, or um, what's the rationale between go for going from fifty to forty? I'll leave that for you, Dwayne. Basically, they bring in line with the rest of the town, and they are going quite quickly. And they're by a playground, future hotel, they hit the tracks really hard. The, the 40 kilometers an hour makes the most sense. Okay. Yeah, our entire municipality is a 40 kilometer municipality. Go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker, Belinda. They're supposed to be coming in at 50, but they're not coming in at 50. They're uh, and uh, you think they would be slowing down, but they are not slowing down. Yeah. And that's coming right. in from my end. So they're whipping by pretty quickly. That's what if, I thought. If the OPP wanted to get their quota, they could pretty fast. Yes. Do we, I'm wondering, Gail, for the updates of, um, what we discussed at uh, the OPP meeting. Is that something we'd like to discuss right now? Yeah, okay. Do you want to discuss that or would you like me to? You can go ahead. Okay. Just on a Monday, we had our, um, we've been meeting, I think quite regularly now with the Ontario Provincial Police um, annually or even biannually. So we had our meeting and they informed us that uh, the municipality of Wawa uh, purchased, I'm not exactly sure of the name of the box, it basically records data of the vehicles going by at what speed at what time in a, in a certain location. And we talked about uh, possibly reaching out to them and the OPP helping us with that. It just gives us information on a specific area. And we outlined three in our community. So we're hopeful that that'll come to fruition. And of course, with this reduction in speed, that'll help as well. And these, and then you end up doing spot checks to like what Belinda's saying, where the police actually sit and you know, a few fines get laid and then people know that it, we're taking it seriously and everyone's taking it seriously. And it is a huge safety concern. My one question is for the recommendation. Are we looking at putting the 50, the 40 kilometers to start where the 50 starts on the other side of that curve? Yes, on both the, the side of that curve coming into town and also exiting towards the dump all the way through all the way through so where the 70 kilometers starts now that's where the 40 will end correct okay okay council are you uh in agreement with that we'll see a bylaw to come next meeting i can see consensus there yeah okay great any further discussion councillor stefanik i see your mic unmuted yeah. go ahead thanks for letting us know that you're meeting with the opp i think this is my third time bringing it up in three years now the third avenue still is a danger zone in my humble opinion um more so during winter time i brought up last three years where they're speeding by and the children do not have any size because of the snow banks being built and i would appreciate if they, they looked at an issue as please Yes, that was uh, the third av was identified, Leslie Street, and there was a third one, Gail. I'm forgetting it now. I can look at the. So email. am I. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I know. Uh, we just we just talked about this. We got too oh, much going out on. Becker Road. Oh, Becker Road. Oh, Becker Road. That's right. Along Becker Road as well, out further past Becker Road, just to um, ensure that our roads being taken care of and that's people are driving safely. Thank you for that, Councillor Stefanik. Okay, if there's no further um, discussion on that, we'll move on. 
16.3 Geographic Centre of Ontario. Duane, would you like to speak to your report first or open it for questions or comment? I think I'm okay to, if you want to uh, just open for comment, I think. Okay. I'll open up the floor to council for comment and thank you for your report, Duane. Uh, Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, three, Mayor. Uh, thanks to Dwayne for his extensive research and uh, recommendation. I, I agree. Uh, my question is through you, Mayor, to Dwayne. Uh, when do you want the committee to get together? I think we should have a, a blush look at it. And uh, when the time is appropriate, your time and, and Stacy's time, we will have to get together and inform the committee as a whole because of some changes, slight changes. And I'd like to keep everybody in the loop. Uh, to be married to Dwayne. So whenever you have time in your calendar, uh, if you could advise me through the CAO directly, we'll put the out for everybody to couple dates to meet and to go over the information that you presented to council this evening. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Stefanik. And was, was there a scheduled committee meeting coming? Go ahead, uh, Gail. I just wanted to add that um, the I reached out to the survey company because the M and R had advised Wayne that we'd need to get a survey, and uh, so I was I was looking for a quote, but he called me back. Uh, Dave Verso called me back and said that in situations like this, they normally can't act on anything unless they get uh, some documentation from the M and R with instructions on what exactly to survey. So he, on our behalf, uh, because he works with them fairly closely, reached out to uh, our contact uh, to ask him if he could provide any documentation. And, and I was CC'd in that email, so I haven't seen a response yet. So um, we have to sort of wait to see what needs to be um, surveyed and uh, get a price. And then I, I would do what I did last time and just put, put it out there that they're coming to town and um, you know, see if anyone else needs serving at the same time so that we can share some costs. And on another note, he was interested uh, about the hotel and asked me when it was going to be here so that he doesn't have to keep staying in White River. So <laughs> that was good. So, can we, anyway, we pre-book rooms? Yeah, really. <laughs> So that that's an expense though that we're going to have for this the center of Ontario is and I I don't know he, he couldn't really tell me exactly what it would be but I imagine it'll be five or six thousand dollars to have the survey done. Okay, okay. Overall, I have to thank you for that, Gail. I have to say, overall, I thought the report was um, positive. I like that no extra permits may be required when we're staying in that corridor and. I just thought overall it was really positive. So, so any further comments on that from council? Okay, we'll move on. 16, oh, sorry, yes, go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. I'll, I'll check uh, through the CAO then in the next couple of days to see what the time frame is and through Duane, so we could set something up in motion then for a meeting. When you rich when they think it's applicable, administration thinks is <clears throat> excuse me, it's ready to meet as a group. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we can leave that behind the scenes for yourself and Gail to work out. Sound good? Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Okay, sixteen point four is the Ontario Nor uh, Heritage Fund Corporation. And Stacy, would you like to speak to your report before I open it up for questions? Nothing. <laughs> no, I'll take questions if anyone has any. <laughs> any comments or questions for our economic development officer? Go ahead, Councillor Stif or Councillor Paroff. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, was there anything in mind at this time that uh, you're looking at? Uh, we really haven't put any projects together, so our plan is really to bring back some project ideas into the main council meeting. Okay. Well, and we'll have to find the money um, to pay our portion as well. 
So. Yeah. When you were investigating the different funds that they released, Stacy, are they much different from what was there before? Are like, do you think they like better fit? for funding brackets? I think um, there's a, a better concentration on Northern Ontario in municipalities under 1,500. Um, that category is new. Um, and there, the, some of the funding dollars are higher and uh, they're good programs. They're, they're fitting better with Northern, on, Northern Ontario for sure. And there hasn't been capital infrastructure projects before. So where we, we could fix our arena roof or um, arts or culture, that hasn't been there before. Uh, the One of the only things that um, for us is a little sad is that there really is no plans or studies. So they're, lo they're looking at capital improvements, which is great, but we're still in some areas, we're still at the study phase. So we'll have to kind of find a project. We, not that we, we just have to identify a a project and um, apply at a level we can find the money in our budget to pay our portion. For the capital stream is, because um, I think it was up to 200,000, would a Zamboni be covered under that? So rolling stock usually isn't. Um, so I can I can check with Serge on that, um, but usually I think with this one, it's um, infrastructure, uh, projects but usually rolling stuff anything with wheels is hardly ever covered in any grant but okay. I on that well like it would be one thing we can fix our roof which it the, we've got a new roof but thankfully but if you can't clean the ice like, like we can't use the facility anyway so that's right Any other comments on the report? My only final comment, and I can't exactly find it in your report, but it's the investment stream where we can, it's a company from the South that relocates into Northern Ontario. I find that one interesting. So that one's not in my report. That's an investment north. So that's actually um, more geared to actual business owners. So I think on it that we need to promote that mm -hmm. um, local area and promote that project um, and and identify if we have any businesses um, that are looking at expanding or moving projects up here. And we did discuss it with um Farm Payne Lumber when we just when we spoke with them. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, I have no more further discussion on that topic. Council seeing none, we'll move on. We have um, 16.5, which is the addition of the official plan. Gail, did you want to speak to this? So Mayor Fort and I were uh, reviewing the document last week, I guess it was, or I can't remember now if it was last week or this week, but anyways, um, and uh, we're thinking it's a good idea to have um, the consultant come and just not, not necessarily present to council before the document goes to um, the ministry, but to address any specific questions or clarification that council may want with regard to uh, anything that may be unclear. It's all new to us. So I know I had lots of things that I had to either look up definitions for or um, request clarification from her. So depending on what exactly you want, she's she's will, like she's willing to come, but um, I mean, she's not going to be, you know, going through the draft documents. They're not for public input at the moment, but they will be uh, further down the line, but certainly she'll address council's concerns or questions. So um, we had suggested to her, as Stacy said, we had a meeting with her today. So we had suggested to her um, the 14th of April, if that works for people, she um, could be available that day for a special meeting. So it's getting hard to, it makes our meetings difficult. We've got so many big projects going on right now and to 
put them, um, I don't think we are, none of us were expecting to have this many special meetings, but to put them onto our uh, regular meetings, it just um, extends them to too long. Yes, yes. Any so anyway, questions? That was the suggestion. Yes, thank you, Gail. Go ahead, Councillor Peroff. Yeah, I was just wondering, like you were saying, we got a lot of these, but um, could we not just wait and see if Council has questions that they want answered before uh, before we commit to having having her join us for a meeting? Or is that an idea? Well, I uh, definitely, oh, go ahead, Gail. Sorry, I was just going to say, well, I, I don't know, um, the comments didn't come back to me. I don't know if Stacy's received comments and questions uh, from Council to date, but uh, what I was going to say was we could um, we could set it up only because we have to set the meeting at some point and we're at, we're at a meeting right now. So we could cancel it, I suppose, if we don't need it. That's what all I was going to say. Yeah, because I, I read the uh, OP, I read it, and I didn't really have any any questions that um, I needed answered before before too long. A lot of it I didn't understand, anyways. But you know, it was kind of uh, whatever. Well, I, but. <laughs> I think that's the purpose of the meeting, Councillor Peroff. <laughs> we need to understand. It. I'm sorry, I couldn't let that one go, John. It was probably a <laughs> slip there. But. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Councillor Kitzmaker Belinda. Personally, I would like to have a, a presentation or a discussion with the people who did the plan, just because basically when it goes out to the public, I think our responsibility is to promote it and to uh, answer questions that may come up to us. And I think... I don't know. I, I think we should understand it. And, and um, what I, I really did like the official plan. I like, there was a lot of things that come out of it that um, uh, I didn't even think of, but um, I, I just think that if we're going to promote it to the public, I, I, I think we should be, I, I think we shouldn't have a little bit more knowledge of it. One thing I would have liked in the presentation was probably pictures, especially for the zoning, how things are supposed to look like. That, that would be a plus for me. So if they're explaining stuff to us, I think the pictures would help. <laughs> examples, right? Is examples. that what you're thinking of? Examples? Yes, I'm thinking examples. And especially right. if we if we have an idea, we can present them to, to the public as well. Thank you for that, Belinda. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Thank you, Mayor. Through you, uh, I agree to a degree with Council Peroff as both as the maker. First of all, I read it. I do not have expertise personal in that area. Um, to have questions, you must have knowledge before to ask the questions. I mean, these are people that's what they do for a living. The thing is, the administration staff will be taking care of this long till we're gone and somebody else will come in as members of council. I think if they bring the highlights to us as a consultant to areas to be could present to the public as I uh, agree with uh, Kissing Maker, uh, Councilor Kissing Maker, I agree with that. But to get in nitty gritty, I don't think that's our job as a member of council is to understand the global context of that zoning bylaw, not issue by issue. I mean, I've read it and made my head spin after about three or four hours. I mean, administration will handle that uh, in the future, but we could have input. And my input was, I sent the email to Gail, it, they will fine tune it as an administration team, which we have a good team, and to fine tune it for our liking through the consultant. That was my take on the whole situation. And I'd like to have possibly, yes, have the consultant do the highlights for us so we understand the basic the grasp of the bylaw. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Stefanik and Councillor Peroff and Councillor Kistemaker. I am in agreement. Like, I don't want to get into us rewriting a plan. That's not at all. But to get those higher 
understanding with some examples. So, and I do agree that we should be ambassadors for this moving forward and understanding it before it actually comes out for public consultation, having a better understanding of that, the highlights and, and how it's going to help and benefit our community. So, Peter, yes. Councillor Stefanik, yes. Councillor Kistemaker Belinda, are you available? Yes, okay. Councillor Peroff? Yes. Yes, okay. So I'm inserting. Okay, so I have Wednesday, April 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for a presentation and discussion draft official plan and draft comprehensive zoning bylaw, J.L. Richards. And Gail, do you have enough um, background from the discussion that councils had here to direct the consultant? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to follow up with Councillor Kistemaker on the, the, the pictures and examples, or, or Stacey can, whatever, to uh, just clarify what it is that you're looking for there. But other than that, yeah. Okay, sounds good. If I can get a mover and a seconder for the motion, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Horn Payne does hereby set a special meeting in a virtual meeting room for the following reason. Presentation, discussion, draft official plan and draft comprehensive zoning bylaw with JL Richards on Wednesday, April 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. That was in favor, right, John? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. None opposed. Okay, moving on to 16.6, Council Committee Updates. And I'll open the floor to Council. Not sure how many committees are running now. Go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Uh, through you, just to repeat what you said, the library board met more last year than the year previous because of COVID-19. Uh, it seemed like we were almost meeting every three and a half weeks uh, because direction was required and uh, we have a wonderful library board. All our pork Park Health Unit meetings did not cease also. Matter of fact, we had an extra meeting as well. So there were full bore ahead, both of those. And that is all. Thank you. That's great. Thank you for that. Any other committee updates from councillors? None from Councillor Peroff, no? Okay. Um, the only thing that I have to report on committee updates is Ontario Good Roads Association. I was acclaimed for another two year term and I was um, nominated and accepted the position of the new committee that's been formed titled diversity, equity, and inclusion for Ontario Good Roads. And I'll be chairing that along with Deputy Mayor Kelly Elliott. So um, she'll be the vice chair. I'm looking forward to that. This is a brand new committee and they are giving us the same amount of privileges as the other standing committees. So we'll have a meeting prior to the official board meetings and look at how we can better not only the organization, but how Ontario Good Roads can help municipalities and their members make strides in this as well for moving forward. So that's uh, all I have to report on committees. Okay, nothing more. It's uh, 7.14. Is everyone okay to continue or would you like a five minute break now? 
We're good to continue. Okay, we'll continue. And then if we're at eight o'clock, I will suggest a break for eight. Okay, we are uh, moving on to 18, 18.1. Repeal bylaw of 925 off-road vehicles. So we saw this last meeting council. If I can get a mover and a seconder. John and Peter. Moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that bylaw number 1846, being a bylaw to repeal bylaw number 1925, governing the operation of off road vehicles on highways only in the township of Hornpain, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any further discussion on the motion? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. And on to 18.2 municipal energy plan program. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago. And John. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff, be it resolved that bylaw number 1847 being a bylaw to enter into a transfer payment agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and Her Majesty the Queen and Wright of the Province of Ontario, represented by the Ministry of Energy Development and Mines regarding the Municipal Energy Plan Program, MEP Program. Community Energy Plan be hereby read a first and a second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or bylaw? There being none, I'll put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, the final bylaw, motions on the floor, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1848 being a bylaw to authorize an engineering agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and Avia NG Incorporated to provide airfield rehabilitation design, project management, and contract administration for the Hornpain Municipal Airport be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or the bylaw or the agreement, I mean? Okay, I just want to bring to Council's attention that I did have a few questions to uh, Gail and Duane about in the agreement, you read that the engineering firm will hold our documents and I just had concerns about that. And I just wanted to bring that to council's attention that they we are supply documents, but they will ultimately hold our documents as well if you read it in the agreement. And I was also in discussion that uh, as you saw in past report that we picked the right engineering firm, so. Okay, if there's no further discussion, I'll put the agreement to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried.
Okay, we're uh, going towards closed session. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and John. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the next portion of the meeting at 7.19 p.m. be closed to the public in order to discuss the security of the property of the municipal, municipality or local board, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, pursuant of Section 239.2AC ANC of the Municipal Act 2001. Those in favour? And that is carried. Madam Mayor, I respectfully yes, ask a five minute, I respectfully ask for a five minute recess, please, in between uh, shuffling from this into the in camera if possible. Yes, for sure. We could do that now. That's a great suggestion, Councillor Stefanik. So if we can meet at the closed session at 720 or 725, sorry. Thank you. I <laughs> gotta learn to tell time. Okay, we'll see you there. who's listening gets uh, kicked out of the meeting here when we sign off because sometimes I don't have control of that. You can just sign right back onto the link and then just wait for us to return. All right. Okay, thank you for that, Gail.
<laughs> Melissa, your mic's on. So it's mine. Is everyone back? Okay, great. You're going to press record, Gil. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, if I can get a mover and a seconder to open, return to open, Peter and Drago. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Drago Stefanik, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation the Township of Hornpain does hereby return to open council at 8.55 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. So we had a <clears throat> closed session talking about uh, possible sale of property and... Uh, there's no resolution resulting from that at this time for council. We do have one resolution, if I can get a mover and a seconder for sale of surplus equipment. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Whereas council has declared all of the equipment located in the building known as 36 Fifth Avenue as surplus property and has authorized the client service manager treasurer to place it up for sale, public sale. And whereas the township has received a bid for the following surplus item, number nine, cash counter with stainless steel top 22 inches wide by 84 inches long. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby agree to the sale of the surplus item listed above to the following for the bid amount listed below plus HST if applicable. Cindy Mackey, item number nine, one cash counter with stainless steel top size is 21 inches wide by 84 inches long for the bid amount of $100. Be it further resolved that all expenses related to the removal of the items for the municipal facilities will be the responsibility of the purchaser. And I put that to the vote, Council. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. <clears throat> okay, we come to the end of our meeting tonight. I want to thank everyone for their patience. And we uh, need a mover and a seconder for our confirmatory, please. Drago and John. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by John Peroff, be it resolved that the bylaw number 1849 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at their regular meeting held on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021, be read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. <clears throat> okay, and our final motion to close, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter. And John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that council does hereby adjourn this regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 at 8.58 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. <clears throat> okay, right on council, that was a huge agenda. Thank, Thank you everyone. You. Have a great evening. 
This conference is no longer being recorded.